Greetings, great bodhisattvas. This talk is called Mathematics of Awakening. We're all aware that um, babies generally will crawl before they can walk, generally, that is, not always, you know, someone who didn't. And you walk before you can run, and it's like that with many things in life. You don't immediately start uh, writing the magnum opus as soon as you learn how to print. Um, you don't jump from learning how to count to 10 to trigonometry. You don't learn how to say mama and papa and turn into a great orator immediately. On the surface, that makes perfect sense. That's entirely natural. And um, once those skills have been learned, it can require some continued usage of those skills so that they don't slip away. Uh, for example, I had studied both French and Spanish while in school. And there was a time when I found myself in Montreal somewhat regularly, so I got to use the French and the area in New Jersey I lived in, I had opportunity to use Spanish fairly often. And then I found myself in places where neither of those languages were going to do me much good. And now I can barely pronounce any of the words correctly, let alone communicate in them. Uh, you don't train, become a marathon runner, and then say, okay, I'm a marathon runner. And then you just stop running and still consider yourself a marathon runner. And if you tried to do one, you'd probably get about as far as 26 yards rather than 26 miles. Um, in all these cases, we need a teacher in order to, to get us started on the path. Um, we have the innate capability in most cases to count and speak and write and walk and run maybe. Um, but unless somebody sort of points you in that direction, it's going to be difficult uh, to develop that skill and hang on to it. In uh, the Lotus Sutra, uh, Chariputra is confused by the Buddha's teaching, and he freely admits it. Uh, he'd been around the Buddha for ages, and uh, he was still confused. And the following interchange takes place between Chariputra, one of his main disciples, and the Buddha. Then the Bhagavad spoke to Shariputra, saying, You have now persistently asked me three times, how could I possibly not explain it to you? Therefore, listen carefully and pay close attention. I will now illuminate and explain it. When he said this, 5,000 monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen in the assembly immediately got up from their seats, bowed to the Buddha, and left. What was the reason for this? because the roots of error among this group had been so deeply planted that they were arrogant, thinking they had attained what they had not attained and had realized what they had not realized. Because of such defects, they did not stay, and the Bhagavat remained silent and did not stop them. Then the Buddha addressed Shariputra, my assembly, is free of useless twigs and leaves. Only the pure essence remains. O Shariputra, 
Let the arrogant ones go. Listen carefully, and I will explain it to you. And Shariputra replied, Indeed, O Bhagavat, I greatly desire to hear it. Then the Buddha addressed Shariputra, Only very rarely do the Buddha Tathagatas teach such a true dharma as this, as rarely as the Udambura flower blooms. Then Shariputra replied, Indeed, O Bhagavat, I greatly desire to hear it. O Shariputra, trust and accept what the Buddha teaches. So what the what Buddha teaches to one, he may not teach identically to another. Uh, that teaching may come later, and maybe it won't even come at all if it isn't needed. There are those of us who think we're possibly more enlightened uh, in comparison to others, which, aside from being dualistic, is probably not the kind of thing that an awakened person would think. Um, we shouldn't assume that we know something just because we think we know it. We shouldn't as assume that we understand something just because we think we understand it. In my experience, there are what I'd like to think of as three stages that we go through in the practice. Now, for example, regarding the Four Noble Truths, uh, we hear that there's struggle, sometimes called suffering, which I'm not fond of, but we'll go with it. There's reason for it, and then there's a way out of it. Yay, there's a way out of suffering, yay. And then maybe we move on to step two or stage two, and that's when we hit um, maybe our Zen practice and we go into the mode of no suffering, no origination, no stopping, and no path. So we go from Buddha 101 to Buddha 201. And then beyond that, beyond the algebra of uh, the Heart Sutra, then we step up to maybe calculus or trigonometry. How may I help you? So is one of these stages more enlightened than any other? Is it more woke? Uh, does arithmetic somehow invalidate calculus? It's a rare individual who can learn to count then immediately jump to calculus. Not, not impossible, I suppose, but I'm guessing it's probably not very likely. You may have heard of the Northern School, Southern School split uh, about gradual enlightenment uh, versus sudden enlightenment. Uh, great son uh, ancestor, Janul, spoke of sudden enlightenment and gradual cultivation. Um, someone once described uh, gradual enlightenment as walking through a gentle rain, um, sudden enlightenment as making a cannonball dive into a pool, and uh, to use the water metaphor further, um, Venerable Tyson, our own guiding teacher here, uh, has described it as, until water is boiling, it isn't boiling, but then it hits 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 Celsius if you are not in the United States. And then bang, suddenly it's boiling. In order to continue to boil, however, you have to keep the heat applied, right? You can't just say, okay, it's boiling, turn off the heat, and then expect it to stay 212 degrees. It's just not going to do that. 
need to cultivate that heat. Um, the Buddha spoke of all of that. Northern school, Southern school, sudden gradual, sudden then gradual, Mahayana, Hinayana, all of that somewhere or another throughout the Buddha's teachings, all those elements exist. Does a teaching on Mahayana exceed the value of a so-called Hinayana teaching? Does the Northern school really fall short compared to the Southern school? They're all concepts, every single last one of them. And that's coming from a guy who's in the sudden slash gradual northern or southern school, sudden enlightenment, gradual cultivation camp. It's all just a bunch of concepts. They're not, they're not doing you any good. They may not also be any hindrance, but one has to realize that in the Lotus Sutra, the Buddha also spoke of Ekayana, which is one vehicle, not great vehicle, not lesser vehicle, one vehicle. Is Mahayana right and Hinayana wrong? Is Ikayana right and both Mahayana and Hinayana wrong? The Buddha spoke of one vehicle. I'm both spoke of one mind. First Noble Truth says there is suffering. The Heart Sutra says no suffering. Which is right, which is wrong. Trust and accept what the Buddha said. Trust and accept what the Buddha said. Trust and accept what the Buddha said. How may I help you? <laughs>